Depots are the heart of the War in the West logistics system. Depots can exist in a city, town, or airfield as long as they're considered to be on the supply grid. And this can be either a working rail line that goes through the location or if the location has a port. You can view your depots on the map by pressing this button or the N key. Depots receive and store tons of freight. This freight is then available to be converted to supplies and replacements and moved to units. The bars on the map and the rollover information give you information about this movement of freight. The black bar denotes the capacity of the depot, which is based on the size of the rail yards and the port in the hex. It's important to keep your depots as far forward as possible, as close to your units as possible, to reduce the amount of trucks required to move the freight to the units. So in this case, I'd want to look around the map, and I can see that the rails have gone further than the furthest depot. And I'll go ahead and build the depot here. And the way to do that is you go to the city screen, and then it'll list the Create Depot. And it cost me one admin point, and I've now created a depot. If there are no rail yards in the hex when you create a depot, automatically one rail yard will be created at 100% damage. Depots can also be disbanded. It's a good idea if enemy forces are threatening the capture of the depot to disband it before it's captured. And you can do that also by going to the city screen and you'll be given the option to disband the depot. If a depot is captured, then you will lose some materials. Trucks are required in the depot in order to move freight from the depot to units. And if they don't have enough trucks, they'll try to get trucks from the general motor pool. There are a few exceptions to this. German units and Type 0 allied non-motorized units will not require trucks if they're within three hexes of the depot. It's assumed that there are animal transport available. And in this case, though, there's an extra supply cost for the fodder. The allied units have an advantage in that if they're within one hex of a depot, they'll use their own intrinsic trucks uh, to get materials from the depot and won't require trucks from the depot. The production screen has a lot of information about the vehicle usage overall. How many vehicles are left in your motor pool and how many are in depots and units. Depots have priorities from 1 to 4, with 4 being the highest priority. The higher, higher priority depots are going to be the ones more likely to get freight and likely to get more freight up to their capacity. Now, it's easy to change the depot capacity. Just click on the hex, and you can use the period and comma sign keys to change the priority level. Now, in this case, since this forward depot is, is running through this one rail line that runs back through these other depots, I want the forward depot to be the highest priority, and I'm going to downgrade these depots to a lower priority. It's important in War in the West to not only have your one rail line moving forward, but to also fill in these lines as quickly as you can because relying on one rail line is not going to get you the required freight that your armies are going to need over the long haul. Another way to change the depot priority is to go to the city hex and click on the priority and then you can enter whatever number you want to enter. You can get a good look at the flow of freight through your supply system by pressing the 8 key and what you'll see are lines showing the flow of freight. The blue lines are port-to-port -port movement of freight. The white lines are freight movement between depots. And then the red lines are the uh, movement of freight from depots to units. And it's going to show the best depot that each unit received freight from during the last logistics phase. So this gives you an idea of where most of your freight is moving, where it's coming from, where it's going to. The best way to view 
a particular unit and what it's received in the recent turn is to go to the unit detail screen, supply details window. And this will give you some good information on what it's received in the last turn and where it got its freight. And although units can draw theoretically from up to five depots, it's rare that you'll see one that's pulled from more than three depots and often uh, only from one. And in this case, North Paris ran out of freight at, at a certain point and no more was received and it didn't switch to other depots. There's a lot of friction built into the system around this, so this is an unusual. Units in refit mode have a lot of advantages in the logistics phase. They get several bonuses in terms of getting uh, additional replacements and supplies. However, the biggest bonus is if you put a unit in refit into a depot hex that has a lot of freight or into a national supply source depot hex that has virtually unlimited freight, then you can be pretty sure that that unit is going to rebuild very quickly. So it's a really good strategy if you want to rebuild a, a very weakened unit quickly to move it into a depot hex. I should correct something I said earlier about depot priorities being one to four. Actually, there is a depot priority zero. If you set a depot to priority zero, it will not receive any freight. Airfields and headquarters have their own priority from zero to four. Other units take on the priority of their headquarter. As with depots, the higher the number, the higher the priority. And this determines which units get first chance at supply and also limits how much a unit will try to receive. There's two ways to change the priority of units. One is to go to a headquarter unit and go to its detail screen, click on supply priority, enter the number you want. And then every unit under this headquarter in its chain of command will have its priority changed to be the same as the headquarter. The other way to do it is to go to the commander's report screen. It's worth noting that air bases can have their supply priorities changed individually. And if you set a airfield to a priority of zero, it won't be resupplied. There's much more detailed information in the manual about logistics. And that's it for this tutorial, and we hope you enjoy playing War in the West.